We're here at Scripps Skin Care with founder and dermatologist, Associate Professor Greg Goodman. And today we're discussing the what and why of pigmentation. So Greg, is pigmentation a problem more women get than men? Yes, pigmentation is probably more common in females than in males. I think that, that uh, the two major rashes that people get, inverted commas, pigmented rashes or brown rashes, are more common. The first one is the hormonal rash that people associate with pregnancy, but it also happens otherwise, called melasma, across the forehead and across the upper lip and across the nose and the bridge of the nose. That's more common in females. <clears throat> and the other condition is something called poikloderma savat that tends to occur down the neck and onto the chest. And that's more common because it's association with perfumes and sunshine. So I personally experience pigmentation, but some days, weeks, or even months, it can look worse than others. What role does heat play in pigmentation? Well, that's an interesting question. Heat has been now suggested to play much more a role in pigmentation than we thought of before. We used to think it was just the ultraviolet light of the sun, for example, that was worsening pigmentation. We now think that heat, which is basically just a wavelength of light, infrared light, um, does actually impact on the skin and visible light does impact on the skin producing more pigmentation. So does that explain why that if someone's treated say it or possibly another skin concern with something like a laser that it can make their pigmentation actually appear worse? Yes, um, it does depend on where and what type of pigmentation it is as to how it responds to lasers and the heat of the laser but sometimes the heat of the laser can act as a trigger to increase pigmentation, a phenomenon known as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that was after the event you actually get increased pigmentation rather than decreased pigmentation as a side effect. Now a lot of our pigment products talk about ingredients that are known as tyrosinase inhibitors. What are they? Well tyrosinase is a, uh, the forerunner, it's an enzyme that makes uh, tyrosine into melanin and if you can stop that if you can stop that transition, you stop the pigment from being produced. And there are a lot of agents that work around that. There are a number of steps in, the, in this um, enzyme complex. There's not just one little enzyme. And that, that is a common target for procedures and, and for products that try to decrease pigmentation. So basically, are they trying to stop the pigment before it occurs? Yes, yeah, so they're trying to stop the melanin before it actually becomes melanin, before it becomes pigment. So is there a particular type of sunscreen I should be using if I have pigmentation? It's a great question because pigmentation and sunscreens aren't a simple answer. We think that heat, as we said, has got something to do with some types of pigmentation and therefore using a sunscreen that's only protective against UV is maybe only half the answer. It doesn't really matter whether you use a physical sunscreen or a chemical sunscreen, whatever your beliefs are in, in those type of sunscreening agents. There is a bit of a feeling nowadays that if you can guard against um, visible and infrared light, maybe a bit more, then maybe that heat production that might increase pigmentation might be a target for future sunscreen technologies. So is there a particular ingredient that we're seeing that does that? The ingredient that is commonly used to guard against physical um, and infrared light is, is iron oxides uh, that come in some makeups, for example, and some uh, advanced uh, sunscreening agents. But they do need to be opaque, and so that is a, that's a, a problematic thing for people like men, for example, to avoid pigmentation. But as pigmentation is more a female disease, maybe they have a role to play into the future. So earlier we discussed the role that perfumes and fragrances play in the development of pigmentation. How do we go about using them in a way that's not going to affect our skin? Well, perfumes and fragrances aren't necessarily an issue on their own, unless you're truly allergic to them. But if you've got sun and perfumes, it amplifies the effects of the sun on your skin. So the logical way is to use them in areas where the sun is not going to shine. Um, for example, in your hair, or on your wrists, or on your clothing, rather than necessarily spraying them on the neck or décolletage, they really seem to be extraordinarily affected by the, the effects of perfume and sunshine. Mm -hmm.